Greetings, Inquisitor. This is the week two update for the Inquisitor Obticio account. I will update this account's progress every week. We started it on January 1st. We hit it with the Hyperdrive bundle a day later, and we've been playing it for two weeks since. So we'll get into the account. We'll take a look around. I'll present this like my low quarter account updates in the future, but for right now, since every little bit of gear that I can apply and every improvement to a ship is very important day to day, uh, we'll just review the account for the first couple uh, uh, reviews. So this is what the account is looking like as of today. We did get Kylo Ren unmasked all the way up to gear 12. That's good. And we've got one gear 13 piece attached to him already week two. All right. But we've been farming that piece out of fleets pretty much ever since we started. So that's good. We do have mods on him. We've got an 11 speed mod here. No speed on that mod. You can see these are pretty terrible mods, but they're the best of the worst. We need to get mods on him, especially important to have uh, all the way to level 15, five dot mods to make the ship as good as possible. So we just have something on him. We'll obviously have to remod him later. Vader is very similar. He's another character that we're working on, and his mods are going to be pretty mediocre, nine speed, six speed. 5-speed here. That's a gray mod. It's a little bit sliceable. This one's sliceable, and this one uh, is okay. It's got a speed mod on the arrow. So we've got okay-ish mods on Vader. He's up to gear 11. Uh, he's approaching gear 12. The skills aren't upgraded yet. Of course, you all know that we have a, a lack of skill materials, and there's a lot of these uh, Mark III uh, ability materials that we need, so we have to conserve them and be very careful. We'll put them on over time as we can get them farmed up and get Vader as one of our early characters. He's a great offensive character. We can at least get him to gear 12 and get that Merciless Massacre on him. That's going to help us a lot in the next round of Grand Arena. Fives is at gear 9. We want to get him to gear 10, but this guy is so greedy at this level. Stun cuffs, Carbontes, second Carbonti, third Carbonti, and a stun gun, uh, the fourth Carbonti. He needs 200 Carbontes and a set of stun guns uh, and a set of stun cuffs to get past this level. So he is a greedy, greedy man at that level. We'll get him there. Stun cuffs over here is what we need for Big's Darklighter. Again, we're going to get him up to seven stars and um, put mods on him. All the same reasons, just for the ships. This is all about fleet trying to get these ships going. So we've got him set up. 10 speed here, 14 speed here. He is part of the Mon Mothma team, so we're not only building his ship, but we've found a way to try to make use of him as a character. So we put some pretty decent mods on him. We're getting him to go a little bit faster. In the early game, uh, just going faster than your opponent and being on a team with some kind of synergy is uh, often all it takes to get a win. Just to show you how the teams are after two weeks, here we've got this Kylo Ren with the First Order team. None of them have mods. He's the only character built up. Similarly, the clones are just hyperdrive clones with fives uh, built up a level and modded. Here we've got the Knight Sisters, and we've got a bunch of level six and nine mods on, on them that uh, didn't work out when we were sorting. We just put the mods on them to, to get the set bonuses more than anything. Geos don't have any mods yet. I really don't want to put mods on the Geos until I get better Geos. And they're mid-50s level. We're still working on their skills. They're, they're not very threatening yet. So rather than mod and remod and remod, we're going to wait and see if we can get some better mods next week. Uh, Yoda has just started. We got him at five stars. We only got his skills up a couple levels again. We just have to be very conservative with the skills that we build up and only put them on the right characters. Uh, we do have Mace Windu built up a little bit. We're playing with the Endurance as a capital ship, so we've built him up and put mods on him. Here we have the Phoenix. We just put, again, scrap mods, things that uh, either didn't work out or that we didn't even put any effort in. And we're just putting on, like, four uh, garbage mods here. There's one with three speed. We're never going to work on that mod. But uh, we'll throw it on there just to get the set bonus. And, again, it's, it's just to make them uh, slightly better than unmodded. Uh, it's not very helpful, but it's a little bit. So in the Mon Mothma team, we've got all five of the characters modded. We've changed this team up. We've gone with Jin Urso and Wedge. And uh, on Chup Chupio and th uh, 
3PO and Chewie, we were able to get a speed mod here. We are going with the tenacity type build that I like for the Mon Mothma team. I talk about in the, that in some of the other videos. We have speed mods mods on Mon Mothma. Speed mods are terrible for her, but we're just trying to get her some speed substats. And that's pretty much all we had at this moment. We'll get her switched over to all tenacity mods and we'll try to improve her speed. She has a really low base speed. She gets plus 50 speed from her skills. So it's uh, yeah, there's no reason to put a speed set on Mon Mothma. You just we want uh, tenacity mods for me with good substats. Wedge is in here specifically because of this passive. He has plus 12 offense and 9 speed for each ally with full health and 15 speed if they don't have full health. And if Big's Dark Lighter is present, he also gains these bonuses. So basically, Wedge is in the group just to make Big's go faster. So we've made Big's reasonably fast. We've made Wedge... Um, okay he's at 143 speed that's nothing to brag about but with the terrible mods that we have right now it's the best we can do biggs on the other hand we have committed some of our best mods so far to biggs and we have him at 200 speed and with those bonuses he'll be up in the 250s and he'll be able to do this big skill here first pull an assist from wedge and get the damage train started we have the vader team here We've got Emperor Palpatine in the lead. We've got uh, Nihilus and Sidious and some other uh, characters in there. Just more Sith to feed the turn meter and make Vader go a little bit faster. It's not a very threatening team since Vader doesn't have the Merciless Massacre yet. And these two teams, the Fin Fin Poe and the uh, Padme team, are works in progress. They're not even in the inventory yet. Mod-wise, the Emperor Palpatine has um, garbage mods on him. Vader has some decent mods. And, of course, we haven't gotten around to modding any of these characters down here yet. This will fill in slowly over time. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more during the uh, um, account briefing. Here we've got the TIE Silencer. This is to be our best ship at the moment. 77 shards of it in the bank. 23 more shards to go to get that to 7 stars, working on Kylo, trying to get him to Relic. Here's the Umbran Starfighter, 29,000 galactic power. We can get another level here on this bonus damage. We're going to go ahead and take that. Now we have to get 5s up another level to keep working on that. Biggs Darklighter, we've got his ship pretty much as good as it can get right now for his gear tier. And uh, I think he just needs stun cuffs, so probably the next set of stun cuffs will go to him. And we can get him up another gear tier and keep making that uh, X-Wing more tanky. The Vulture Droid is our uh, best first reinforcement. We need to get more of these purple uh, skill materials so that we can get that Discord missile. That'll give us an ability block or uh, a buff immunity that we can come in and try to put that on the Hound's Tooth and uh, work on those Hound's Tooth fleets that are showing up already over in the fleet shard. For capital ships, we've put just a tiny bit of work into the Endurance. You can see we've popped it up to level 82 instead of level 80, and that's pretty much all we've been able to do here. We can uh, potentially upgrade this protection, but this is the alt, and it uh, there's a lot of battles that are never going to get to the alt anyway, so putting a bunch of levels in the alt may or may not be a good idea at this point. So I'm debating on whether to do it. And in the end, I think we just decide to leave it as it is for right now. We'll come back to that ship, uh, obviously, and keep working on it. I'm messing around with the Endurance. Uh, the Home 1, it was my intention to put Home 1 as my main capital ship. But I really just can't find a use for Akbar. Um, uh, Mace, on the other hand, he can go into a Qui-Gon team if we build that. He can go into an early Jedi team under Bastila. So there's at least, you know, some call for Mace to be to be built so what i'm going to do is i'm going to try and experiment guys i'm not saying uh, that i know whether or not this is good but uh, i'm going to try to see if we can get the endurance to work as my first capital ship we do want all three capital ships up and running we got tarkin to seven stars as well he's not a bad character and he can go in the vader team if we want him there uh, so we're gonna you know put mods on him and get our other capital ship functional so that's what the account looks like as of today. In terms of stats, second week, 937,000 galactic power. We put on 84,000 galactic power in the last week. It seems like quite a lot for the amount of improvements that I felt like I've been able to do. But uh, yeah, so 84,000 galactic power in addition. 
We still only have that one Zeta that's on Mon Mothma. Once we get back into the Grand Arena cycle, we'll get some more Zeta pieces and hopefully get some more Zetas going. Most likely do Merciless Massacre next, and then probably do the Geo Brood Alpha as the third Zeta. That's my outlook right now. Squad Arena, Mon Mothma scoring top 100 for us. I haven't been able to push up into the top 50 yet. We'll keep playing around with that comp and see if we can uh, somehow get that worked up, you know, punch it above its weight. Uh, we're already 40,000 among uh, a bunch of accounts that are 65 to 80,000 galactic power, so I don't feel too bad with the team's performance so far. In Fleet Arena, we've got uh, Home 1, the Silencer 5's Bigs, Top 10. Like I said, I'm putting the Endurance in there. We're going to play around with the Endurance as the capital ship for that. I got top spot, uh, I got like uh, fourth place a few times last week, and that was pretty nice, but uh, there's a bunch of people coming up quickly. Uh, who've got, you know, four-star Hound's Tooth. There's a $25 pack in the game that gets you a Hound's Tooth. And for anybody who didn't buy it or doesn't know about it, it's an incredible value. It gets you the Hound's Tooth unlocked. It gets you Bosk started. And you can, uh, you know, if you're willing to spend money, that's a really great pack for 25 bucks. You just get a Hound's Tooth functional right away, and that's a huge advantage in, uh, in the Fleet Arena. The project remains to try to relic Kylo Ren unmasked in week five. Now that's going to take some doing, guys. I'm going to make some sacrifices to try to make this happen, but, but we're going to push it. We're going to see if we can get a relic in five weeks. The energy plan for next week. I'm still farming eight hard nodes every day. Hyena Bomber, Vulture Droid, BTLBY Wing, TIE Bomber, the uh, Hound's Tooth, which is the Jango Fett node, Range Trooper, Piet, and Mon Mothma. Uh, farming all those characters. Phew! In Fleet, we're farming Anakin and Grief. Uh, we're farming Grief sometimes. We haven't been farming him every day. Uh, we did get that note unlocked to three stars, though, so that's pretty good. Uh, the rest of the energy, of course, has to go to that gear 13 if we're actually going to relic that character. we just got to keep pouring that into the account. In the Cantina, we're going to keep farming that Kylo node until we get the Silencer to seven stars. And after that, we better start farming signal data if we expect to relic this character, so... There's a bunch of characters I need out of the canteen. I still need to work on Soldier and Spy, uh, but I can get them out of the fleet store, so I may try to pick up some of their shards eventually out of the fleet store. Um, we'll have to see how all that goes, but if I'm going to go for an early relic like this, i got to start jamming on the signal data right away. Mod Energy, I'm still going to split that. Do a little bit on speed, a little bit on defense, and probably farm about half Tenacity mods. The whole Mon Mothma team I want to build with Tenacity. The Kylo Ren Unmasked, uh, his early mod set could very easily be a Tenacity mod set uh, to be successful. And if we put him as a Relic character on defense in Grand Arena, he's very hard for people to deal with in the early game. And if he has Tenacity and resists all their debuffs, then it becomes even harder because you can't really get him stunned or get him debuffed. So... We'll, we'll try to go with the Tenacity mods for a bunch of different reasons uh, and, and build some of them first before we start really leaning into the speed. In terms of refreshes, we're going to get three mod, three energy, three fleet, and three cantina every day until our crystals run out. And then we're going to try to figure out how to manage that cantina farm to, uh, uh, to balance it out. But we'll certainly try to keep three uh, refreshes going on all those other energy types. The shop plan for next week. We're all the way through the, uh, the the first couple farms, right? So we're on to the, the Qui-Gon Jinn. We're going to keep farming him out of the Cantina store. And then, uh, even though there's other characters out of there that I want to farm, we're just going to lean into the Shard Shop. Again, we have to start exchanging something for Shard Shop currency if we expect to build this Relic character, so we just have to do it. And then we'll circle back around after we establish some kind of balance there. And, and start working on another character out of the cantina. Maybe finish out the, the Phoenix or something like that, trying to get Emperor Palpatine unlocked to seven stars, for example. In the guild store, we're looking mostly for Carbantes. Uh, as I said, if we ever want to level up fives, he's just greedy for Carbantes. All the characters need stun guns, Carbantes uh, everywhere. So that's the gear that will stop us the most so we're getting that out of the guild store we're also looking for stark shards when we can and clones if they show up if we have enough uh, money in the uh, currency in the bank 
In squad, we're going to go ahead and seven-star that Newt Gunray. He can lead a scoundrel team and help us with credit heist if we need it. Um, probably won't really need it, but uh, but it's good to have him. He's just a good, flexible character. He's good in 3v3. And there's no reason not to build him early. We can go ahead and grab him out of squad. And then we'll work on some of the gear down there uh, just to make sure that we keep up a balance of some of that low-level gear. And we'll also use the squad arena to defeat the shard shop. We're not going to start buying prestige out of that shop quite yet. Uh, we'll hold off on that. In the Galactic War Store, we'll finish out Biggs. We'll work on his X-Wing. We'll start picking up a lot more of those Geo ships. And uh, we'll circle back around to Poggle. I'm not uh, desperate to get him to seven stars right away. So we'll let, we'll let that take time, and eventually, um, you know, we'll have some Galactic War currency to spare, and it'll go toward, uh, toward Poggle. In Fleet, just to be clear, we're going to store up a bank of, of materials of currency, we're going to have enough in there that we can always buy Grievous if he ever shows up in the show, in the store. We're going to have enough that we can always buy Sunfax ship if it shows up in the store. And then if we have extra currency, over 2,000, we'll buy the Umbran Starfighter. And uh, if we really have a lot of currency, let's say uh, up, up around 3,000 because the other stuff hasn't been showing up, then we'll just start picking the other Geo ships and the other Geos out of that shop while we have extra currency. In the Guild Event Store, we're saving all of our Get 2 for Malevolence. That's all we're going to do with that. And for Get 1, we're going to save that all for gas. We may buy some Veer's Shards out of there eventually. I think we can get Veer's Shards from that short store. But for right now, we're just going to sit on it, and then we're going to start building a bank right away. Don't want to get uh, all the characters built up for gas and then not be able to actually build the gas. That that would defeat the purpose. we got to be able to get him to 7 stars. In the Shard Shop... The only thing we're going to buy with Shard Shop currency is the purple stuff that we need for Gear 13. We're not going to buy extra Carbantes or Stun Guns or any of the other good materials that we could potentially buy out of that shop. We're only going to buy the purples for that Gear 13. Again, if we want to stay on target for that Kylo Ren Unmasked, that's the way we've got to play it. In terms of resource management, we exhausted all the credits in this account. You know, we got the $20 million from the Hyperdrive bundle, uh, got some other stuff cashed out in between, and that's all gone. It, it goes so fast, just trying to level up characters. So what I recommend, especially if you're not familiar with how fast credits go, uh, what, you, what I do and what you can see me doing in this account, I'll put characters at a mid-tier gear. You saw some of the Geos, they were at like 50, 56, something like that. When I have all the gear for the next tier, and what's holding them back is they're not high enough level to apply the gear, then I'll go in there and I'll level them to the appropriate level, I'll get them that gear tier. If they could get the next gear tier, then I have to level them up again to get that gear tier. But just by holding on to those credits and not going ahead and just blasting those characters to 85, then I can keep those credits in the bank. And the important reason why I want to keep those credits in the bank, I want to be able to use, uh, you know, mod. I, I want to be able to develop mods, keep testing, keep seeing if I'm getting some good mods. I've already got two or three that I can slice at, at gray level. Um, I've worked on some gray mods. I've sold about half of the gray mods that I got for the uh, left side, and I'm working the gray mods for the right side. And uh, that takes a lot of money. And if I want to slice some of those mods, that takes a lot of credits. So by holding off on leveling the characters, then, uh, then then you can, you know, keep some currency. It doesn't give you any more currency. I mean, you don't have more currency because you do it. It just delays the leveling. You can keep that currency for mods. And then later on, you'll have to level the characters. So the plan is right now, I want to mod one team per week. So next week, I'll try to mod... Uh, the Geos, if I can, um, if we get a good tenacity set for Kylo, we may remod him because he's really our lead character for the account. Um, but other than that, I'm not going to go remod a bunch of characters. I'm just going to try to sort through good mods and get decent mods placed on one team each week. Maybe I won't do the Geos next week, and then in the next round of farming, maybe I'll go after some critical chance mods. We, were, we are going to want to uh, mod that... Uh, Soldier for Critical Chance, for example, so we'll want a little bit different mod sets when we go for the Geos, so maybe they're a couple weeks out. But we'll try to do one team per week uh, for the next few weeks. 
Then about week seven, that should be where we're joining the, uh, getting ready to join the, the second full round of Grand Arena for this account. So what we'll do then, by that, by that time, hopefully we'll have some good mods in inventory, and we can really go in and kind of remod the Mon Mothma team and remod Vader and get some of these characters that we like with a better set of mods and flush some of the loser mods, some of the stuff with no speed and bad stats that we're just, you know, living with right now. So that'll, that'll cost a little bit of credits, and the reason I say we're going to do it that way, I just don't want to go in every week and keep trying to improve Vader's mods and improve Vader's mods. And, and if you keep micromanaging your mods like that, it can really cost you a lot of money in the remod cost, switching mods on and off. And uh, you don't want to pay those credits any more than you have to. So let's say uh, the, the mods on Vader are, you know, on a quality of 1 to 10, they're at a 2. Well, I don't want to take them up to a three and then a four and then a five and whatever. I want to wait until I have enough mods that I can go in and I could just take him from two to five. And then later, like three months later, I'll come in and take him from five to eight. And uh, I really just don't, I don't like spending credits over and over again to remod. In terms of resource management, we're going to focus a few characters. We're going to use the levels as the spending gate like we talked about. And if you look at the account, we've really only got 10 characters that we're actively going to be putting gear on. We've got Kylo Ren and Mast, Biggs, Mon Mothma, Fives, and Mace Windu. And then Jedi Knight Anakin, we're going to build him. We're going to build his ship, so he's another character that we will put some effort in. And then four out of the five Geos, again, Poggle is not critical to that group coming up. Three of them are pilots. we got to work on them. The Brood Alpha, we got to make him big enough so that he doesn't just keel over when he goes into battle. Uh, and then Poggle can lag behind a little bit. He'll be the last one we bring up. Avoid too much investment elsewhere. That'll help manage the, the credits. In terms of progress, some people wanted me to, to mark the progress of the account. Just so, you know, looking back over the shoulder, we can tell when these things got completed. So in Fleet, I've gone all the way through 4C on hard, completed with three stars. That's the node with Grief Karga. 4D, I can't even complete. I can't even complete it with one star yet. Fleet 5A normal. It actually has gear that I'm going to need for this uh, relic on Kylo Ren unmasked. Uh, I one starred it. I played it, uh, I think, five times. I won four out of five times, and I could never get above one star on it right now. So if I have to farm it that way for the Kylo Ren relic, it's really going to be super annoying. But hopefully we can get that three starred within the next couple weeks and, and get that... Uh, and get that turned into a farm node. So I'm kind of desperate to get my ships just a little bit better and close that one out. Dark side, I did all the battles through nine hard. That's fine. Light side, I haven't started farming yet. Uh, there is so little energy left over at the end of the day when I get done with all those eight hard farms. I only have like 30 or 40 remaining energy for the whole day that I can use. So uh, I've been working my way through the nodes a little bit at a time. We'll keep getting those unlocks done. Uh, if we don't need any gear over there yet, we're not desperate, so we've, we've got some time. But we'll get two or three nodes unlocked a day until we, uh, until we get through it. And Conquest, uh, joining pretty much straight with the Hyperdrive account uh, and, and, and rolling right into Conquest. Um, I was doing great. I was clearing everything. I got up into Sector 5, and I got to this point where the only team I can fight is Bad Batch and uh, I can't beat them. So I'm not quite sure if I can get through that node on this conquest within the next couple days. We'll see, but I think I'm stuck. Um, I'll go back and try to complete a couple of the earlier quests, and I think I can grab Crate 6. Uh, that's not too bad with a whole bunch of modless characters in an a account that's just hyperdrive. I haven't done any energy refreshes on it. I've just played with the energy that I've gotten and uh, uh, gotten a lot further than, honestly, I thought I would. All right, that's going to wrap it up. Grandma Mod here saying, remember to farm your mods. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> if you want to make a good account, if you're going to do what I'm doing with Hyperdrive, you got to understand the quality of your mods is going to be the quality of your account. And if you don't dig in right from the start and get farming those mods and commit those refreshes every day and start working on your mod inventory instantly, uh, you'll get passed up by any player that does. If you're a spending player, and you were to say, okay, I'm going to buy the Hyperdrive bundle and I'm going to invest another $100 on top of that, uh, I would tell you right at first, you know, uh, double up on mods. Go as far as to do six refreshes a day, pay those 100 crystals, 
Um, I, I don't think there's anything more valuable for a fresh hyperdrive account. If you're just going from one to hyperdrive, uh, there's nothing you can spend your crystals on that's more valuable. After the standard three refreshes across the board, uh, putting more refreshes into that mod energy uh, will serve you far better than putting more refreshes into regular or fleet energy. So that's my opinion. I feel strongly about that. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. I apologize. Uh, I'm kind of sick and my nose is kind of runny, so <laughs> I apologize for that during the video, but hopefully you guys get the content without too much distraction. Uh, remember to like, subscribe if you haven't done that already. It helps me, helps the channel. Leave a comment down below. Start a conversation about this Obtisio account. I want this to get some hype, especially so that new players who might be buying the Hyperdrive bundle can use this as a resource to sort out the confusion and help give them uh, some guidelines to build a good account without wasting all those great resources that you get with the Hyperdrive bundle. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you, and I will see you in the next Holocron.